engagement. But with the increasing population in our country, there is there should be proper supply of food to the people, but to the extent of our population, there is no such food production in India. So there is an urge here to study about the crop production and its management. Here we wonder sometimes what is meant by a crop. Here we go. When plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large extent or on a large scale, it is called as a crop. In this video or in this picture, we can see the maize plants, only a particular maize plants in the field. So hence we can call this as a crop, maize crop. In India, according to varied temperature conditions, here we can see there are two types of crops grown. Curry crops, they are also called as rainy season crops, which are grown from June to September. Those examples are paddy, maize, soya bean, Tabby crops, crops grown from October to March, those are called as winter season crops. Best examples are wheat, mustard, and pea. See, the crop production needs several steps. It, should, it doesn't happen in, a one, in one or two days. So there will be several practices to be made. The first step, first and foremost step for the crop production is preparation of soil. The process of loosening and turning of the soil, it is called as a tilling or plowing. The implements which are used are plow, used from ancient times. See here in this picture, we can see in old, in ancient times, we have been seeing from many days whether it is made up of wooden plow or iron plow. This is used for tilling the soil. This is the ancient technique and there comes many advanced techniques as well. This is also a one type of uh, instrument used for tilling the soil that is called hoe. And this hoe is generally used in um, a small scale industry such as gardening and uh, horticulture, etc. Cultivator is advanced, most advanced technique used for loosening the soil. And this is, this is being attached to the tractor and uh, it saves our time as well as our labor also expenditure and labor so what is the need what is you might wonder what is the need for preparation of the soil because the preparation of the soil or loosening of the soil helps in the growth of earthworms farmer friends earthworms are called as farmer friends right so earthworms and microbes which are present in the soil this allows the roots when the crop grows and roots will penetrate easily into the soil right so after these roots will penetrate into the soil, they can breathe the gases easily into their roots. And also this brings the nutrient rich soil to the top layer. The soil contains many layers, many layers. So the nutrient rich soil will come to the top layer and then the crop plant will use these nutrients and this can give the better yield. Okay, so this is the, uh, need for the preparation of soil loosening of soil helps in the growth of farmers friends which adds humus earthworms microbes etc and this also allows the root to penetrate deep into the soil and to breathe easily this also brings the nutrient rich soil to the top layer so that the crop plant will use these nutrients for their growth and uh, Next comes the second step is the sowing of seeds. Next comes the sowing of seeds. Before sowing of the seeds, we need to check whether the seeds are of good quality or of poor quality to get better yield. Right? So for the sowing of seeds, there are ancient techniques and also advanced techniques. See, this is the traditional tool for sowing of seeds. There will be a funnel here attached. And from this, in this funnel, they'll pour the seeds so that the seeds will be so that the seeds will be poured uh, onto the soil at a particular distance next the advanced seed drill is used for sowing the seeds this is advanced technique and which saves our time as well as labor so mm -hmm. these days these days everyone are using advanced techniques next the third step is adding manure and fertilizers 
the substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called as manure and fertilizers manure is a natural substance whereas fertilizer is a factory made or man made man made uh, man made uh, in the substance right so manure is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung human waste as well as plant residues fertilizers or fertilizers or chemical substances which are rich in a particular nutrient these are factory made advantages of manure are it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil and it also makes the soil porous due to which the exchange of gases becomes easy what is meant by porous so there will be proper aeration for the nutrients as well as for the gases to uphold as well as to exchange easily that is called as a soil, soil porous capacity so this is these are this is the third step adding manure is also important why because if you if you put or if you cultivate same type of crop for longer time what will happen is this will lose the soil fertility soil fertility will be loosened gradually and uh, when we cultivate when we want to cultivate a crop of, uh, to get better yield we will not get so we have to add manures as well as fertilizers to a certain extent so that it can give better yield so manure is a natural substance whereas fertilizer is a chemical based substance which will enhance the nutrient capacity or nutrients to the crops of, or to the soil next comes irrigation irrigation as you all know every living substance plants are also living substance crop is a living substance crops are nothing but plants of a similar type which are grown on larger scale in a particular area so irrigation is nothing but the supply of water the supply of water to the crops at a different intervals of time is called as irrigation some crops will need irrigation all the time whereas some crops will need uh, water only during particular intervals or particular time so according to on the basis of this we will irrigate the crops we can have will we have a number of methods of irrigation so the ancient techniques here are mort chain pump techniques dekli rahat or some of the ancient techniques or conventional methods used for irrigation in our fields so this is more type of irrigation of so what the farmer is doing here is he is uh, taking the water from the well and uh, he is pouring to the fields chain pump irrigation there will be a chain for the mod like it acts like a motor and it will irrigate the fields dekli irrigation is also a type of irrigation and uh, this is also with the wells this goes with the wells rahat irrigation is indicated with bullocks and uh, this will be roaming all around and this and thus the water will be pumped to the fields in this way these are ancient techniques so these are outdated next comes modern methods of irrigation or a sprinkler system and drip irrigation see the sprinkler system and drip irrigation drip system of irrigation were successful in almost all the water scarcity areas so drip irrigation in this drip irrigation a small or a very thin pipe is there and at a particular level or at a particular distance there is a hole there so that the water comes to the crop at a uh, drop by drop without wasting any uh, much water so the type of crops which needs less amount of water can be irrigated with the help of this drip system and the sprinkler system as you might have seen in many places the sprinklers also uh, needs only small amount the crops which needs a small amount of water will be cultivated with the help of this uh, sprinkler system and these are most advanced techniques nowadays farmers are using next the fifth step comes for protection of weeds see here what is meant by a weed weed is nothing but the undesired plant which is grown in the fields so what we have to do we have to take out the undesired plant from the field field what what happens if we not take the weed these weeds compete with the main crop for for sunlight for space and for the nutrients so this will grow faster rather than our main yielding crop plants 
So that is why we have to take out these weeds, like uh, which are unnecessary for our cultivation. Removal of unwanted plants from the field is called as weeding. This process is called as weeding. Weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called as weedicides. So weedicides are certain chemicals. We can use uh, such type of chemicals for removal of weeds. The next is harvesting. Harvesting of the crop. After all the above processes are done, like preparation of soil, adding manures, sowing the seeds, irrigation, then come protection from the weeds, then comes harvesting. So the, now the crop is mature to cut off it, to take the crop yielded so far. So what is meant by harvesting is cutting down of the crop after it is mature or after it is ready for cutting for, the, for our grains or our, or our um, yield that is called as harvesting of crop. After harvesting, the grain need to be separated from the chaff. You might have seen in the paddy fields, right? So the cut grass and the grain should be separated. And for this, that process is called as a threshing, harvesting, threshing. And nowadays, harvester is being used with the most advanced technique like harvester is being used for both separating the chaff from the grain. Harvester is used to cut the crop when it is mature. This is the harvester. This is the most advanced technique which saves time as well as our labor. Next and last and the important step is the storage of grains. We have done everything. We have irrigated the fields, prepared our soil and uh, we have sowed the seeds. We have added manures. We have removed the weeds and we have cut the at the crop fields, everything we have done. And now what we are doing, what we have to harvest the crop and we have separated the grains from the grass. Next, we have to store the grains. Store the grains, right? After storing, where we'll store the grains? Harvester grind grains have to be protected from moisture, pests, insects, microbes, and rodents. These are the enemies for the road, for the crops. Harvester grains have to be protected from all these moisture. If the grains has um, much moisture, first of all, they should be dried in the sunlight and then they should be stored in, in the gunny bags. And they also should be um, protected from pests, insects, microbes, harmful microbes, as well as rats, rodents. Next, large scale storage of grains is done in silos and granaries to protect them from enemies. Large scale. So those storage pumps are called as silos and granaries. These are all the steps which are involved in, these are all the steps which are involved in the crop production and 